uh, the political participation of, of uh, indigenous peoples worldwide. It is, there is a profound gap between uh, policy and action, uh, policy and decision making. Uh, let's ask uh, in terms of public investment, how much uh, money go goes to indigenous peoples worldwide. This is the Gomaluku podcast. What new roles can Indigenous people, civil society, and academia play to ensure that building back better after COVID-19 is based on agreed principles and rights? Um, like, what is the role of Indigenous peoples in confronting, confronting climate change? Also, um, I'm sure that a lot of people have already seen that the IPCC report came out today. Um, it's very disturbing. Um, and people are, are um, now more than ever looking at Indigenous peoples. Um, about, about, about their guidance, about their knowledge. Um, any, any thoughts on, on the, the new roles that these people uh, can play? Um, making sure that we come up better out of COVID, coming out of COVID-19. Um, yeah, I guess it's my, my turn to speak. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I entirely agree that there is a, a, a huge implementation deficit. We have these standards that have been articulated in uh, by by the United Nations system, but then at the at the national local level, we have we're, we're a big you know, there's there's a lot uh, lagging behind in terms of actually seeing those rights uh, realized, and you know a, a lot of more effort needs to be uh, put forward at the at the local and, and national level to see these agreed principles and rights. Uh, actually take hold and, and and implemented. Of course, COVID has been a bit dis disruptor. It's 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 made processes that were already in place a, a, a stall, partly because of shifting priorities. Or, um, but there's a need to to turn back to with with the um, with the new awareness that the COVID is is brought to the to to the the plight of. Of, of many uh, with the inequalities in the world, there's a need to turn back to implementing these agreed principles and rights with regard to indigenous people through real uh, practical measures. Um, uh, part of that is seeing you know, reforms in legislation and constitutions. Uh, Canada just last month you know, joined those very few states that actually has adopted into legislation in some form. The UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. That's a very good development. We see other countries uh, uh, engaged in constitutional reform processes. Uh, Ecuador, of course, uh, uh, around 2010, 2011, very important processes. Uh, Bolivia has been mentioned. Uh, currently, Chile and Mexico are looking at reforms and constitutions. So these are very important uh, developments, and, and they they help build this new. Uh, social social contract that we're talking about, but a lot lot more needs to be done, and 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 beyond legislation and and, and constitutional reform to actual programmatic change uh, on on the ground, um, and of course in the participation of indigenous peoples in in these these developments to see uh, rights implemented uh, is key, as Maria Fernanda emphasized. Without that participation. The arrangements that are ultimately promote, pr pursued, you know, cannot work. The, the, the legitimacy depends on the participation of uh, of, of indigenous peoples. But uh, the, the 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 need to to operationalize the rights and principles that have agreed upon is is, is apparent. Um, and the, there is uh, so far been a lack of sufficient political will across the the globe. Uh, like I said, we've seen certain positive developments, but overall, a lot more, more needs to be done. Um, and, and, you know, beyond seeing Indigenous people's specific rights uh, being implemented uh, through concrete efforts, uh, more needs to be done to, uh, to involve Indigenous peoples in confronting these uh, broader issues like climate change and the food crisis. And I think it's been manifest in di many different ways. The, the way that indigenous knowledge can be brought to bear uh, in a positive way to 
addressing problems with climate change and food crises, um, revitalizing indigenous people's own agricultural methods, or allowing indigenous peoples to do that, supporting that can go a long way to addressing uh, the food crises. Uh, going back to some of the methods or allowing indigenous peoples and supporting their, their, their efforts to go back to some of their agricultural methods can be uh, beneficial, taking advantage fully of indigenous knowledge with regard to uh, the natural landscape and its relationship to the climate, to climate uh, is important. So that's an important dimension as, as well. Uh I appreciate it, James. Um, Maria, before I go to you, can you also explain, because um, there's a question, can you explain what is an implementation deficit? So people um, uh, people are asking what that exactly is. Um, very much appreciate it. Well, I, I think that uh, uh, James has just explained what it means. It means that um, there is a lot of effort in, in, uh, in uh, shaping um, decisions, resolutions, the very uh, UN declaration, which was a, is a historical landmark. We have uh, uh, laws and policies and uh, regional, um, th there is the, the, the uh, Inter-American Declaration on Indigenous Peoples' uh, Rights, the UN. We have a series of legal instruments of of uh, policy guidance instruments, but then when when it comes to actually uh, implement, transform, uh, use uh, all these um, um, mandates uh, in 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 uh, pieces of 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 uh, of either international law or pieces of of international political guidance into the national level. Uh, there is a gap. And even when you have proper national legislation or you have in your constitution a declaration of, that you are a plurinational state, it, it, in reality, it does not happen uh, in terms of uh, the rights, the livelihoods, uh, the political participation of, of uh, indigenous peoples worldwide. It is There is a profound gap between uh, policy and action, uh, policy and decision making. Uh, let's ask uh, in terms of public investment, how much uh, money go goes to indigenous peoples worldwide? How much, what is the part of the budget that goes directly to indigenous peoples? So, uh, speaking about public budgets, uh, let's say. So, uh, there is a disconnection again between uh, law and policy and between policy and action. Uh, this uh, shortage of action uh, and shortage of investment, the shortage of rights, uh, it's what we call this implementation deficit. Uh, going beyond words, we have this phrase, deeds, not words. Uh, action is what, what we need and how to measure action is extremely important. So again, the role of accountability, of monitoring, um, it's extremely important. And um, I think that uh, that's what the social contract needs to be about. Uh, I'm, I'm a big defender as a linguist, I'm a big defender of words and the power of words and the power of narratives, of course, but uh, I think that words need to be translated into improving uh, the quality of lives uh, of, of, of people on the ground. In this case, the quality of life of indigenous peoples on the ground. And uh, in, uh, you, know, you look at any indicator, take uh, the 17 sustainable development goals and just add a uh, factor in the indicator of indigenous person or indigenous community or uh, or uh, in in my in the case of, of uh, our my country indigenous nationality and and let's look at numbers of poverty at numbers of uh, of malnutrition and hunger access to education uh, impact uh, of climate change what are the most vulnerable communities uh, and and believe me that then you will have uh, the answer and the counterpart of that is, is look at the contribution of indigenous uh, peoples, for example, to fight climate change, um, adaptation innovations, resilience building, 
uh, when when we look at COVID even, you know, let, let's look at uh, FELAC's uh, platform on, on COVID. It's an incredible good practice, an example for the world in how, you know, self-reliance, community organization, traditional medicine and traditional knowledge, a collective forms of organization have been key uh, to uh, resisting uh, to uh, the COVID-19 uh, COVID pandemic at the community level. Uh, in, in, in FILAC, look at COICA and the efforts of um, indigenous peoples of, of the eight Amazonian countries and how they have organized themselves uh, to, to, to counter uh, the COVID pandemic. And um, so that, that's what we mean by, by uh, um, you know, this gap between policy practice, knowledge practice, the connection between the communities at, and, uh, of knowledge and the communities uh, of practice. I mean, this is the kind of divides and disconnections that uh, we need to overcome. Deeds, not words, basically, that would be... Uh, would be uh, the short answer to the question. My friends, I hope you enjoyed this. Please consider to subscribe, to comment, and to share this video on your socials.